All right, everybody, welcome to Talking Taker, episode number 34 of our encyclopedic exploration, digging up the career of the greatest professional wrestling character of all time. Thank you for joining us for yet another round of Dead Man Talking. My name is Alex Morio. I am one of your co-hosts, one of the tag team partners and Creatures of the Night here for episode 34, just in time for Mania 34 for all you listeners out there. And I am joined, as always, by my tag team partner, my wrestling buddy, Travis White. Travis, are you ready for WrestleMania? I am ready for WrestleMania 34. I am sad that I will not be attending with you. Uh, unfortunately, my job is not. I was not able to get off to go to this. Um, but I'm glad you get a chance to go and represent Talk and Taker. Rock your Taker Easy t-shirt while you're there. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys can go pick one of those up at tpublic.com. Um, yeah, we're shilling it. It's okay. We're wearing them right now as we record, so it's all right. It's all good. <laughs> no shame. You got to be a mark, you be a mark for yourself, you know? That's so right. So every wrestler on Monday Night Raw comes out in their own t-shirt, so that's what we're doing here. And hey, wait, one time when we were at WrestleMania, our first WrestleMania, WrestleMania 20, we ran into Hurricane Helms walking yes. around Toys R Us in the middle of the day, not for a public appearance. He was just at Toys R Us shopping, and what did he have on, Travis? He had on a Hurricane Helms t-shirt. He absolutely did, man. Living the game. with his brand, dude. That's that right. was back in 2004, too. Excellent. <laughs> Very good call back there. Awesome. No, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for you to go to WrestleMania, um, get Talker Taker on, on the ground there, and I'm excited to talk about this WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania the 13th. That's I'll, right. I'll comment on that later. WrestleMania the 13th. Yeah. WrestleMania Heat. As it is also known briefly on one yes. advertisement, on one episode yep. raw for some reason. Uh, we're going to talk about all of that here. We're going to dig into it. Perfect timing, WrestleMania 13 on the eve of WrestleMania 34 on, uh, you know, I, I don't know, we're recording this before the final raw before WrestleMania, so I don't know if The Undertaker finally showed up to respond <laughs> to John Cena or if we have to wait till Mania itself to see him, but I am excited at the probable at this point match of Cena versus Undertaker. I know we've often talked about how, you know, maybe it wouldn't be our first choice to have Taker come out of retirement after uh, what seemed like a perfect ending at WrestleMania 33. But, you know, if anybody's going to pull a good match out of The Undertaker at this day and age, it's definitely going to be John Cena. And it uh, will be quite the spectacle to see whatever does happen at WrestleMania. And I'm sure we will talk about it here on the show. Oh, absolutely. And uh, again, if he's going to come out of retirement for another match, I'm glad you get to be there to see it, you know, rep it where um, we can come back and talk about it on the podcast. And I'm just I am excited for that aspect of it. Um, it does diminish the whole point of this. But it is all good. <laughs> no, it doesn't diminish it. No. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It accentuates it. it we get exactly. One more, we get one more match. So. What better publicity for us? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I, I'm bummed that you're going to be missing it. Uh, I'll be going with my brother-in-law, Buck, instead. And we'll try to document it as much as we can over on all our social media pages. But uh, it won't be the same without you. We will talk about our two, so far, WrestleMania appearances uh, when we approach them here on this show. Yeah. And hopefully there will be many more in the future. Uh, but speaking of things that uh, not seen, you know, back in the day, I wanted to mention something that uh, we skipped over on last week's episode. It was just jam packed, and this week's jam packed too. But let's just jam it well, packed some more. He buries him alive, right? Uh, excuse me, two weeks ago. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks Final ago, four. Final Four. Something that happened in the build up to that was the Undertaker's uh, maybe his only appear- or, or a rare appearance on a program called Shotgun Saturday Night which had just debuted. He had a really cool match with Triple H on that show. And, uh, you know, we posted it on our Twitter. And you can find it on YouTube, all that sort of stuff. It's it's short. It's cool to me because of the whole vibe of it. It takes place yeah. in Penn Station. And 
uh, you know, not the restaurant, right? <laughs> your favorite. Oh, man, I would be all all over that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the Penn Station in New York City. Yeah, yeah, and it's got a really cool finish with Undertaker tombstoning Triple H on top of an escalator, and Triple H just rides the escalator down <laughs> unconscious. But uh, you know, how did his hair not get caught in the escalator? I don't know. As a child, I was afraid my foot would get stuck in there. Oh, absolutely. I'm surprised his hair stayed in, intact, but. Go ahead. Continue. Well, you know, I just wanted to, to mention it because Shotgun Saturday Night, that is what I am waiting for to get added to the WWE Network. You know, WCW Saturday Night just got added. WCW Thunder just got added. Oh, yes. But when I was 11 years old, when this was on, I wanted so bad to watch Shotgun Saturday Night. The advertisements made it seem so cool. It was edgy. It was different. It was shot not in wrestling arenas. It was shot in nightclubs. And the commercials made it seem so cool. And we did not get it in Augusta, Georgia. None of the local oh. channels showed it. I remember I the night it was supposed to premiere, I flipped through all the channels like constantly all night long. <laughs> I looked in the TV guide. I looked in the newspaper TV guide. I looked everywhere you could find channel listings. And I could not find it. And I could not believe this WWF show was not being shown in my area. So I was just, just always desperate for it, always wanted to see it. So I would love for those first two months of Shotgun to be added to the network. They're, they present just such a cool look and vibe that's missing from today's product where every arena looks the same, every stage set looks the same. I just miss that uh, uniqueness uh, to Shotgun Saturday Night and to, the, to that era of wrestling. So, oh, yeah. The closest thing we got to that recently has been the UK tournament a uh, mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. and a half ago or whatever it was. Um, yeah, because it was different, you know? Or if they ever show those clips from, like, an NXT house show, you know? Those yeah. Are cool. But other than that, yeah, everything's – and I understand. Everything's polished and it looks the same because you can cut it out and, you know, everyone knows your brand. But, yeah, Shotgun Saturday Night was neat because it had that uh, – yeah, just the gritty feel, you know? It was really cool, so – I wish they'd do something else like that every now and then. Just put it on a network, you know, yeah. just a network special like that. Like like Starcade last year. Man, that would have been awesome. So, exactly. Anyway. Every once in a while, something like that would be good. Or um, these NXTs from Center Stage are awesome to yes. watch. Too. So, yeah, changing it up. Different. And another thing that I didn't ever see until many years later, in addition to Shotgun Saturday Night, was today's show, WrestleMania 13. For some reason, our local video store in Augusta, Georgia – had all these wrestling videos and would get all the pay-per-views, but it never got WrestleMania 13. They never got a copy of it. So for huh. many, many years, until I got the WrestleMania Anthology DVD set, I had never seen WrestleMania 13 in full. Uh, so that's just... I don't, wow. I don't even know if that's interesting or not. Just It just made it me think about me. it I as assume. we were going through it. Because I, I had seen every WrestleMania up until that point, and I watched them all afterward. But for some reason, this was like the... The Holy Grail, the lost one that I couldn't see. Uh, and so it was fun for me to – I'd seen it before today, uh, but I went back and revisited and watched it again. So it was cool to sure. cool to go back and see WrestleMania 13, the 13th, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. No, I hadn't seen this WrestleMania in a long time. Um, I mean, obviously, Bret and Austin is one of, if not the – greatest wrestlemania arguably the greatest wrestlemania match of all time uh depending on who you ask but uh it's definitely in top five as bruce pritchard would say <laughs> top five best wrestlemania matches so yeah i've seen that and bits and pieces i've seen this match but it'd been it, it's probably been 15 18 years since i've seen this match so it was neat to go back and watch this undertaker match neat i say we'll see we'll talk about that later <laughs> <laughs> it's really that neat or not so anyway but um yeah wrestlemania 13 man it's march 23rd 1997 from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago, Illinois, which Steve Austin says is his favorite building to wrestle in. Mm -hmm. Rose, I forgot what it's called now, but um, maybe Allstate Arena. The United Arena. Center or Allstate Arena? Allstate, yeah, yeah, I think it's Allstate Arena. Um, United Center is where the Bulls play. But anyway, okay. they, they always talk about Rosemont. Him, Edge, Christian talk about how it's just, it's just a great, like the acoustics in there are awesome. You could definitely feel the crowd. And, um, and you definitely feel it parts of this show. <clears throat> Not the main event, but Parts of the show. Parts of the so. show, for sure. Uh, but before we jump into that, let's uh, talk about the build-up to it yeah. a little bit because it's just, again, it's insane. You know, the, the the pace of these shows has picked up wildly from when we first started. And we used to be able to just bounce around to a couple of Raws in between yeah. a couple months of pay-per-views. But it just feels like, you know, we want to cover these pay-per-view matches, but we want to give the proper context for them. And there's just so much happening uh, that we're going to try to dive into it as much as we can. We 
we don't want to be a three hour long podcast and we're not going to no. be, but, uh, the, uh, some of these episodes are uh, going to be a little bit longer. So we hope we make it entertaining for you to, to sit through and, and, and to go along on this ride with us of nostalgia and going through it. But I'll quit babbling about that and just get into raw. I believe it's episode 197 from, uh, mm. is that, or <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. Right. I was saying 1997. Uh, it's raw one. No, that's right. It is 197. It's uh, <clears throat> February 17th, 97. February 17th, 97. Yes. But it is Not after Final Four. Yeah. Yes. So we talked about Final Four last month. It ended with Bret Hart winning the WWF Championship in the Final Four match, eliminating The Undertaker last. And he's going to have to defend <laughs> the title against Sid the very next night. And that is the main event of this Raw. It is the uh, first time ever that the WWF Championship ever changes hands on Monday Night Raw as Bret Hart ends up dropping the title to Psycho Sid. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize. I didn't think about that. But, yeah, it makes sense because, yeah, I can't remember what happened before that. But, yeah, that's cool. That's neat. And this is the first official two-hour Raw. Like, it's officially moved to two hours now. You know, we had right. a couple we talked about that were special two-hour episodes. But this is the first. And JR makes it, you know, Loud and clear. We got two hours of action here tonight from now going forward. So um, I think they moved it up an, up an hour, right? They added an hour on the front side, maybe? I believe I that's what happened at Nitro. first. So, yeah. Again, we're talking the Nitro competition is kicking – they're kicking Dirty F's uh, creative juices in the full blast, man. And it's 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 paying off, man. This stuff's good. It's good stuff. This episode of Raw has got – you know, it's got the storyline threading through it. It's Brett versus Sid, again, like you just said. Where, and anyway, it's, it's thread through the whole show because it actually starts. It's the first match on the show, and as – as they're coming out, JR announces over commentary that Undertaker will face the winner of this match at WrestleMania 13 in the main event. So I don't know about you, but I'm just assuming it's because he was the last guy thrown over the top rope in the Final Four. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. And uh, again, we talked about that on two weeks ago, how everything's been thrown into chaos with Shawn Michaels losing his yeah. smile and dropping out of this WrestleMania. So all these plans are getting rejiggered and shifted shifted around uh, you know it, we're seeing the pieces move in right in front of our eyes in a lot of ways yeah. so yeah i think you mentioned it, it it may with Shawn michaels if Shawn michaels had stayed we still might have got undertaker versus sid but obviously it wouldn't have been for the wwf championship probably right um uh, but we're kind of seeing that you know, take shape again. So Undertaker is going to fight Sid. So we're got, we got to make him the number one contender somehow. And it's also all building to this idea of Bret Hart continually getting screwed over too. It's yeah. All playing a piece of that as well. Oh, absolutely. And again, you mentioned a few episodes ago, man, this whole Montreal screw job in November, people say could have been a work and you could see the, <laughs> you could see it line oh, yeah. up here with all this Bret to get screwed stuff. But anyway, um, he's trying to push through this episode of Raw here. So Austin comes back, he, he or comes out, he chops, chop blocks Sid's knee. That means the match is going to be pushed out till later on the night. And then um, so they try Sid versus Brett again, but little cockroach Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out again. And he attacks Brett in the gorilla position as Brett's walking through the gorilla, which is pretty cool. Again, they're using different aspects of the arena, which they hardly yeah. ever do nowadays. You got all three of these guys brawling: Brett, Sid, Austin, and. Even Vince gets up and like shoves him back because he's sitting yeah. in gorilla, I guess, which is neat to see him get involved. Uh, I just thought that was funny. And finally, we get Brett versus Sid number three. They, they try it a third time at the end. And it's funny because on commentary, they're like, we're not going to bait and switch you here. We're going to give you <laughs> plan. I'm like, well, you bait and switch this twice so far. <laughs> All night long. Yeah. But um, again, they're just ripping on WCW for whatever that bait and switch was during Robin Hood. But right. um. Austin interferes during this match when it finally gets going. At the very end, he interferes and hits Brett with a chair. The ref doesn't see it. I don't even know if Sid saw it. And uh, Sid power bombs uh, Bret Hart and wins. You know, he won with a power bomb, dude. One power bomb. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't happen. That's his finisher. I know. Wouldn't yeah. happen today. It was awesome. Well, it was awesome. Uh, it was is cool to see. Like I said, first title change ever on Monday Night Raw awesome. and. Undertaker comes out, and we get face-to-face. -face. Undertaker yeah. and Sid are our WrestleMania main event to build that up. So setting yeah. the pace for the next month of episodes of Raw, uh, which...
takes us to the next week, Raw 198, which is a pretty historic one you might have seen yeah. before. This is the one where they're back in the Manhattan Center for the ECW Invasion episode of Raw. So half the roster is out in uh, South Africa – or Germany. Sorry, Germany, South think, Africa yeah. is the next month. They're out in Germany, so the other half is still here, and Vince brings in the ECW crew to fill up yeah. <laughs> time on the show and also help – promote their pay-per-view and continue their little talent sharing relationship. So there's a lot of cool stuff on here with that. Uh, but the main event is Undertaker against Farouk. Uh, yeah. So continuing this his is... little fe- mini feud with the Nation of Domination. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've been talking about the last couple months of shows. He's had this little side feud with them, and it'll actually come to a head later on as we get in here. Um couple pay-per-views from here so but yeah there's a little picture in picture interview um during taz versus mikey whipwreck and it's farouk and he says the undertaker is going to need an undertaker tonight so <laughs> he's calling him out he's gonna, gonna kill him i guess <laughs> bury him I guess. alive i don't know he's gonna murder a guy on that's a death threat yep yeah but this is the this is the um episode of raw where sabu jumps off the the raw set or whatever that that's the iconic image from this episode it was it was neat to go back and watch this raw because I don't think I've ever seen it in its entirety, so mm. I've just seen the little clips and the, you know, especially Sabu jumping off. But anyway, that's the, um, so we get to the Undertaker. He, he has a picture in picture during uh, Devon versus Tommy Dreamer as well. And this is where, uh, at the beginning of this podcast, I said WrestleMania the 13th because he, Undertaker says here that the march to WrestleMania the 13th begins. I think the Undertaker, there he is in the Undertaker, ladies and gentlemen. Come on out here, Undertaker. One on one. With the leader of the nation of domination, Farouk, any last minute thoughts? Tonight, the march to WrestleMania the 13th begins with the nation. They will all be laid aside. And the only thing that stands between me and Psycho Sid at WrestleMania the 13th is time. Look at this. Thank you very much, The Undertaker. I was just like, what's WrestleMania the 13th? Like... <laughs> Is that supposed to be like a Friday the 13th? I yeah. don't know, but I mean, I just, I don't know. It's the 13th one. Undertaker's yeah. in the main event. He's giving him that horror feel. Man, yeah. <laughs> for some reason, that promo, I've always remembered him saying that. And yeah. I always thought about that with this WrestleMania. WrestleMania the 13th. And uh, I thought they built it up more like that. They did, I don't think they did too much besides that one promo. Yeah. But man, that one stuck in my head for some mm. reason. I thought it was cool that he did that little twist on there. little Undertaker yeah. twist. Yeah. Uh, he ends up uh, winning after the uh, that match with Farouk after the Nation interferes and the Road yeah. Warriors, the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom, who had just returned that night to the WWF, they come in and make the save with the Undertaker. So I don't know if they ever did that at any of the house shows, Undertaker and Road Warriors against Nation of Domination. Oh, but man. that would have been a sweet match. <clears throat> That'd be a cool match. <laughs> yeah, been awesome. Three hosts throwing people around. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Ring. Um, this is also fun fact. This is also that Raw where um. Ken Shamrock is being interviewed by Pettengill, and it's when they, they announced that there's going to be a submission match with Bretton Austin. This mm-hmm. is the one where Stone Cold was sitting at home. He says he 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 always talks about, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I found out sitting at home I'm going to have a submission match, and he's like, I don't have any submissions. So I just thought that was kind of neat too um, to throw in here. But, yeah, so that's, again, Undertaker wins that match by DQ. Um, that takes us to the next the next episode of Raw, which I believe is from Germany. Um, it is, and, I mean, this is – you know, Undertaker's not on this one. He doesn't do anything here, but we do get um, his opponent, Sid, is going to face Mankind here yeah. uh, on this episode of Raw. Uh, so, I guess, yeah, I think this... not much to say with this one, although it is um, a couple historic things. Of course, you've got the classic European title match yeah. between Owen Hart and the British Bulldog, which is one of the best WWF matches of all time, if you've never seen that. Go out of your way to go see that, of course. And this is the final episode of Monday Night Raw, as we would yeah. know it. It's the final time we hear that iconic Monday Night Raw theme song. And the final one before the changeover to Raw is War. So, historic yeah. for those reasons. So, yeah, they went out in the blaze of glory at, at Germany. So, <laughs> come back from Germany. <laughs> it's weird that they're doing this change because the next episodes of Raw is right before WrestleMania. You know, usually nowadays we're so accustomed to any kind of logo changes or rampway. It's always yeah. after Mania. They reset for the next year, you know. But um, here it's two weeks before Mania. So, And but, maybe yeah. it's because it's Raw 200. It right. Is Raw, that, that's the one they launched, Raw's War. But, yeah, it is usually the 
the shift begins or the uh, new season begins or whatever with yeah. uh, right after WrestleMania. So yeah, a little bit different. Well, this is uh, Raw uh, March 10th. This is where you get to your your warehouse fire opening with Stone Cold walking through and the guys battling in the ring. And it's just so iconic for those of us that grew up in the Attitude Era watching it. And the Thorn in Your Eye song, uh, that's always going to be Monday Night Raw's theme song to me. Because, again, this is where I um, – this is the year I came back in as a full-fledged fan and was watching. And you got the, the pyro, the ramp here. You got Titan Tron. You get all different. You don't have the R-A-W letters. It's – it's, it's so cool to see. It's cinematic, you know. There's not yeah. like just clips of all the wrestlers. It's this movie scene, and it's. I mean, it's what to me this intro. And that's what you want wrestling to be. I think it still holds up. You know, I know yeah. the, the, maybe the music is a little bit dated. You don't you don't hear a lot of metal music and stuff now. <laughs> but you know, there's flames, there's pyro, there's guys just fighting each other, and this war zone is what it looks like. And I think that video package it kind of sums up what so many wrestling fans are still craving nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that this era of wrestling really gave to us, and we just. We still love wrestling. We still enjoy a lot of aspects of it, but we're not getting that grittiness, that toughness, at least not from WWE, per se. Sure. Well, what a difference. In other ways. Yeah. What a difference Pyro makes, too. Man. There's so much Pyro at the beginning of the show. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's just blowing up. Over the place. If you're flipping channels, that drags you in, you know? If you're flipping channels around 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, whatever it was, True. you know, that's going to draw your attention to it. You'll draw your eye to it. Um, so that's, you know, something to be said for that. So. Uh, we'll see how much power they have at Mania. Maybe they're gonna. Uh, maybe they saved up for a year. They usually. And, uh, do. Yeah, they're gonna use it at Mania. So, um, I mean, at the very least, Brock Lesnar will get pyro. So, uh, you you can let us know about that when I you will. get back. I give so. full report. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But um, this show opens up with Sid, uh, and again, the WWF champion at this point. He's a promo in the ring with Jr. Um, he's supposed to tag with Undertaker versus Vader and Mankind tonight. So at this episode. So again. Bringing back uh, Vader and Mankind. Again, we've gone over them with Undertaker and his history with them. So it's kind of neat to revisit that. Uh, right, right. With Vader and m- more specifically with Mankind for me personally. But um, Sid, of course, this is a classic, you know, tag team. Doesn't want to tag with each other, you know. And we're seeing lots of that in this build up to WrestleMania currently in 2018. So, um, part, you know, the uh, unwilling partner type thing. So I doesn't want to tag with him. He think, but he, he said he thinks something's fishy and, he tells Taker to stay, stay in the cemetery because uh, <laughs> this, this is what I wanted to point out. He says, What you need to do tonight, Undertaker, and maybe even for the rest of your career, is you stay in the cemetery where you belong. Because after WrestleMania, that's where I will put you once and for good. <laughs> I'm going to put you there once and for good. And I was like, what? It's once and for all. Or is he trying to come up with his own? Like, Not in Sid's language, man. <laughs> Dude, Sid, he has been a trip to watch, man. Watching these I love it. It's so, it's so bad, it's good. It's like a B-movie. It really bad. is. Like I mentioned on a couple episodes ago, he's over. Like The crowd yeah. goes nuts for him. You know, the, the, He's got a lot of flaws, and we'll, we'll point those out in the match, I'm sure. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all make fun of some of his promos. They're they're iconically hilarious, a lot of them. But man, he, something about him connects with the audience, and, and you can see it. It comes through the screen. His charisma does. You can't deny that stuff. No, um, absolutely. Undertaker comes out and he says that Sid's logic doesn't really add up. I don't know if he's yes. talking about that part of the promo. <laughs> That's but, a shoot, uh, brother. <laughs> it, he refuses to team up with Sid. And says instead he'll just take on Mankind and Vader by himself. And Sid should just enjoy his final few days as being a champion. Uh, and then Paul Bear comes out to interrupt. And I noticed at this point that you know, the, there were steps to the ring on the side of the ring instead of on the corners of the ring. Yeah. Did you catch that? Yeah. The, yeah. the steps like go from the rampway and then the steps go into go the straight ring. Straight up. So yeah, you don't that was, go around to the side. Yeah, they didn't quite know how to build the set quite yet. <laughs> and uh, another thing they didn't quite know was the name of the show because Paul Bear called it War on Raw. You both don't want to face the future WWF Tag Team Champions tonight on War on Raw! Wow. <laughs> Swing and a miss there, Heyman. Yeah. Um, 
But Vader and Mankind come out and attack, and Undertaker and Sid fight them off, and they do end up teaming with each other uh, here in the main event of this episode of Raw. Yeah, I just, I just wrote that it's funny too how like this is the first episode of Raw's War and it's the same format that we get nowadays. You got the yeah. opening promo that sets up the match later on in the night. Um, you know, you got the, the baby faces being interrupted by the heels or whatever, and you know the little brawl in the match comes later. So I just thought that was uh, nothing. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Nothing changed in 21 years, but uh, for the most part, you can stamp uh this is how the episode's gonna start and, and end so um but you got more ecw invasions and stuff and a and a huge shoot segment here on on this episode of monday night raw again yeah. go ahead and go ahead and watch these uh, it's really cool even, yeah it's really neat and nostalgic but um gorilla monsoon again acting president uh it's gonna announce the next he's announced the next week it's gonna be sid versus brett in a cage um that's that- gonna get his rematch before yeah. wrestlemania he's gonna get his chance to be champion again so once we finally get to the main event here of this Raw, it's it's Sid, and he faces he starts off facing Bank, Vader and Mankind before the Undertaker actually arrives. So it's a two-on-one at first, and um, Undertaker finally gets in there, and it's a it's your typical partners that don't get along match with the accidental hitting. You know, all of a sudden, when you're tagging somebody you're feuding with, you get sloppy in the ring. <laughs> they start falling <laughs> over each other and yep. hitting each other and running into them and stuff. It's just kind of funny how these wrestling tropes have all grown up and, and looked past because of this huge mark. So um, it was just funny. Uh, I, I talked about those steps earlier. Mankind clothesline take her out of the ring and t- took an ugly bump onto Ooh. those steps. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think he knew they were uh, remembered. They were there. Something he does that clothesline <laughs> where he flips over the top yeah. rope and just, Ooh, it is another ugly bump of many that we've seen from mankind <laughs> adding up on his body. Yeah. It's- um, yeah, yeah, it was it was bad. Um, basically, there's confusion, like you said, between Sid and Undertaker, uh, and uh, Sid ends up power bombing Undertaker out of frustration, and Vader. He gets a choke slam first. Okay, yeah, yeah, he choke slam, get choke slam by Taker on Sid first, and then this is where Taker hits that flying cow move, or what, what they call yeah, it. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Where he flying <laughs> cow. He runs and jumps over the top rope. This iconic at this point in our lives, but back then, it, I don't know if this is the first time we've seen it. Or we no, seen he it done before. a couple. He's done a few time. other times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he hits that, and then yeah, he rolls back in, and Sid power bombs him, like you said. So, um, and Vader gets the pin on him. So Vader and Mankind yeah. are getting a tag team title shot at the pay per view, and again, just sowing some more tension between uh, Sid and Undertaker. Um, and except as Vader and Mankind beat him up after the match, Sid ends up stopping Vader from hitting a power bomb on the Undertaker, uh, but the two. Excuse me. But uh, Undertaker and Sid just end up fighting towards the back. Uh, right. To, you know, end this episode of Raw. And I, and I said, you know, this feud isn't great. It's not. Right. It really, when you compare it to Bret Hart and Steve Austin and all of that <laughs> awesomeness, it just doesn't have the same oomph, oomph to it. But, you know, they're kind of making chicken salad out of chicken crap yeah. Yeah, that's what it feels like they're trying hard undertaker and sid both are but it's just it doesn't pop off the screen it doesn't have the same legitimacy to it and the same uh just power to it as stone cold and bret hart's feud so it's not really their fault they're doing what they can but it's it's not it's not the greatest undertaker well, and sid's feud i think part of that is because neither one of them is a is um there's there's shades of gray there. He, like, Taker's obviously a face. Okay, he's obviously a big face, but he's got this new edge to him. We you know we mentioned in our, I think it was the final four episode. How he said that, you know, the old Undertaker that ran through everybody is coming back, and I'm you know I'm gonna wreak havoc on everybody. But we've been talking for the last, you know, since since I guess the Diesel match at WrestleMania last year. How he's got this new wrestling style and new edge to him and all that. So, um, he's still but he's still a face. But then Sid does heelish things and will get booed but he does you know, like you said he the crowd just loves him and despite his flaws so i think that there's a huge sid chant in this match yeah i think it takes away though because there's not a clear cut baby face or heel you know but again um the losing the smile thing which sean kind of do a wrench and everything so uh, you know it's funny we i've heard in so many shoot interviews and podcasts and bruce pritchard has said it that Vince McMahon doesn't like baby face versus baby face matches and they don't draw as much but 
look at the history of WrestleMania and <laughs> yeah. how many times do we go back to that? I mean, you got Hogan and Warrior, and then you've got um, you've got this match. You've got Undertaker and Sid. You've got Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. You got Rock and Austin. Uh, you've got uh, look at WrestleMania this year. Cena and Rock. Cena twice and Rock twice. <laughs> you got Cena and Undertaker this year. Shawn Michaels and Undertaker both times they did that. You got AJ yeah. Styles and Nakamura. Um, I don't. Yeah. Charlotte and Oscar. I mean, I don't yeah, know. They're, they're kind of in the middle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just they, they they keep going back to that well for a lot of times that they don't yeah. think it works, and I don't know. Just interesting. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but real is. quick, another interesting thing. Taker, Undertaker main events, the first ever Raw's War, just like he did the first ever episode of Monday Night Raw uh-huh. originally. So Look at that. I didn't even pick up on that. Cool, yep. man. That's a cool stat. So, yeah, that's awesome. Good for him. See, again, we've talked about, you know, talking about our old episodes. or just I remember when we started this, we talked about how you can tell Vincent Mann loves Undertaker. And I think you mentioned an episode or two ago how – because Sean, you know, forfeit and tiled through a wrench and everything, you suspected that maybe Vince is just like, this is Undertaker. He's my guy. He's not going anywhere. He's loyal to me. He's loyal to my brand. I'm going to award him with the title of WrestleMania. And so that makes perfect sense. And uh, maybe that's why he's in the main event here. Again, this could be all us overthinking everything, which is fine too. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's but, what makes um, it fun. Exactly. That brings us to Raw the next week, which is the go-home show for uh, – for Mania, this is Raw March 17th. It's St. Patrick's Day Raw. I don't think they even mentioned that or did anything. Nowadays, you'd have a leprechaun on a pole match or, um, you know, well, bathtub match or something. Well, they yeah. did have my favorite match of all time <laughs> on this episode of Raw. This is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Mini Mankind and Mini Vader versus Mini Goldust and Masquerita Sagrada Jr. <laughs> This really happened on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> it did. And uh, I, I, what, 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 just what the heck is happening yeah. <laughs> on the go home episode? Yeah, <laughs> this it is how we're building play... up WrestleMania. Exactly. It doesn't play into anything. But like, as much credit as we're given for all the good writing and how awesome it is, there are still turds in the punch bowl, just like that match you just said. Can you imagine uh, if on Raw this past week, and maybe they did, I don't, like I said, we're taping it before yet, <laughs> what if they had mini John Cena and mini Undertaker versus <laughs> mini Roman Reigns and mini Brock Lesnar? Can you imagine? Oh, man. That's Golly. the equivalent imagine here. Twitter backlash from all the people <laughs> saying how uh, exploitative it is to put minis on Raw. Anyway, but not yeah. just that, that they're mini versions <laughs> oh, of yeah. those, of guys that are already, that's the amazing part yeah. to me. It's not just that they're minis on Raw. <laughs> Mini Can Vader and Mini Go- Mini Goldust is also about five feet tall. He's like, yeah, he's so yeah. tall. He's like a ninth grader. <laughs> Do you think uh, they got like royalties, like v- Vader and Mankind and Goldust, like from these guys using their characters? Oh, like, I'm sure. The what's the uh, lawyer's name? Jeremy McDevitt. I'm sure he yeah. got some royalties. <laughs> he, he get a get a good contract for these guys to make sure that everybody gets royalties. So yeah, oh, man. but um. Man, this this raw is this is Sean back at this raw? He comes out and t- says he'll be at Mania, right? I think so. But I didn't um, write that down. But yeah, I think uh, but you're right. watching Vince gush over Sean oh is gosh. absolutely brutal. Man, he loves this guy. <laughs> he wants to be him. You're right. You said it a couple episodes ago. He's just man. This is he is the guy that Vince Man wants to be is Sean Michaels. It's so ridiculous. And he looks uh, good in his uh, Vince looks good in his windbreaker zip <laughs> only at the bottom. Like yeah. I Just enough in. to have the zipper connected. Everything else is well, open. I had a teacher in high school that did that, Coach Whitfield. Exactly. <laughs> he would only zip like the bottom inch and a half of his uh, shirt. Shout out to you if you're listening, Coach Whitfield. <laughs> uh, but um, this, again, this Raw is iconic for the cage match at the end. And what happens immediately after that? Um, yeah. We're getting back to the series. This is, it, it, now it's been changed to a WWF title match, according to Gorilla. I think last week they just announced it was a match, and they officially says it's a title match now. So, right. again, you got this story. You got you got Brett and, and Austin at Mania. You got Taker and Sid at Mania. Um, so, if Brett wins this match, Austin has a championship match on Sunday. Exactly. Um, so, he is going to want Brett to win. Taker is going to want Sid to win so that he re- retains his championship match for Sunday. So... Seeing that play 
through is is really neat because again everybody has some stakes involved here. Stone Cold's trying to stop Sid from winning. Undertaker's trying to stop Bret Hart from winning. They both come out and interfere. It's supposed to be a cage match. It's supposed to be preventing right. all these guys from interfering, <laughs> but uh, you know, of course not. Uh, of course, everybody ends up interfering. You get this really awesome visual of all four guys on top of the cage, all fighting with each other, trying to uh, help somebody win. And Taker eventually, very slowly, hits the door on Bret Hart, allowing uh, Sid to to get out of the cage and win, uh, retain his title, keep. The status quo maintains Sid versus right. Undertaker for the WWF Championship, but and that's how the match ends. But that's not how the show ends. Oh, yeah, hold very on. famously. Let, yeah, let me interject real quick here because things are about to get serious. I want to interject a little lightheartedness before we go here. Um, uh, I'll try to take a snapshot of this, but before like watching them build the cage, um, this is the blue bar steel cage. You know, it's yes. not the chain link when we're used to nowadays. This is still the blue bar era. Watching them build it was. Um, I don't know, kind of sad because uh, because nowadays it's, everything runs so smoothly, it just comes down from the ceiling. You know, it's it's good. But um, I think I'm pretty sure that Kevin Sorbo and El Dandy were helping build this cage. You think? I, I mean, there are two doppelgangers for okay. El Dandy who's come up twice, I think, now on this podcast. I think so. And uh, and I'm pretty sure Kevin Sorbo, um, who is uh, those of you who don't know, he was a Hercules in the '90s. Oh, the everyone knows that. Everyone gotta know. But anyway, also star of uh, God's Not Dead. There's a, a threequel to that just coming out last week. So, um, anyway, uh, go on and yeah, that was some lightheartedness because yeah, things are about to get serious. Business is about to pick up after so this match. Brett loses and loses his championship opportunity. He's going to go against Austin at Mania, but he's been screwed for the last whatever. He came back in November, right? He's been screwed for the last four months here. So, take it away. <laughs> well, Vince McMahon comes in to try to get Bret Hart's thoughts, and Brett shoves down Vince McMahon and just unleashes this and it's on the on the network it's uncensored yeah uh, tirade uh, using not just regular cuss words but stuff you really can't say on tv you couldn't say back then you probably say it now but you definitely couldn't say it back then um and just telling off everybody uh, saying he's been screwed over just unleashing uh, all this frustration and it is like it, it, it's incredible to watch now yeah as a kid as you're watching it you're just like <laughs> putting your hand over your mouth just like yeah. whoa what you're is like, happening you're like i hope mom doesn't come into the room right now yes exactly because he's dropping gds he's dropping the s word he's shoving vince um yeah it's it's intense man it gets i'm real. sure there are so many kids whose parents walked in on them watching raw <laughs> in that moment and got in so much trouble like you're yeah. right i never thought that's hilarious well i remember side note i remember watching a nitro one time at my at our buddy deke's house uh in 98 and i remember he and i were sitting there watching it and kevin nash drops the s-bomb and ryan's his mom walks in and she's like what are you guys watching i was like i'm sorry and so she made us turn it but anyway yeah that's why i thought of that because it actually happened to us so, that's perfect uh, but uh sid comes back out here yep to get on the microphone and did you catch what he said this is a classic sid he comes out and he says you want to know something I don't know S H I T cry baby. So this is and, th- and this will become another famous angle in WCW when he says I only have half the brain that you do and all that stuff and you know Nash and Hall are laughing at him and so Sid just shoots himself in the foot on every my time. <laughs> he just claims that he doesn't know crap. So I thought that was awesome. So, uh. oh well, then Stone Cold comes out, uh, Undertaker comes out, uh, everybody's fighting. Brett dives on the Undertaker. Uh, the two matches kind of pair off. Stone Cold and Brett brawl. Undertaker and Sid brawl just for like five minutes to end the show. Yeah. And this is this is how you sell a pay per view, man. The yep. Two top matches just tearing at each other. This is not two guys playing tug of war with a belt <laughs> and posing for yeah. to end a show. This is wrestling, man. Four guys who hate each other are gonna get it on at the pay per view. Somebody's got to leave with the championship. This is what it's all about. It made me want to put down thirty dollars to order this pay per view. Yeah. Twenty years later, man, it was really well and, done. And in addition to all that, it goes to show how important the title is to these guys. Again, we know it's scripted, but we want to just suspend our disbelief and believe it's real. These four guys believe that 
they believe in everything for being the champion. You know, they want mm-hmm. to be the champion. That's why they're all invested in this match. Even if they weren't in it, they wanted their opponent to win. It shows that. But again, I bring up Finn Balor was the first Universal Champion. He still hasn't gotten a rematch. All right, let's move on. But anyway, I'm just saying it's it shows how uh, how awesome and intense it can be when these guys really believe and and the product is presented as a way that these guys all want that they want to be the man. They want to be the champion. So um. That brings us. Uh, we'll finally get to WrestleMania here. That's, well, real again, quick, I got. Uh, I got to mention I'm two things. Yeah, oh, yeah, go ahead. Two things. Uh, also, on this episode of Raw, I forgot to mention as we were going through it, we do see a, a short clip of Undertaker participating in the death of a Bill. Uh, he's at this publicity event as there. There are apparently some restrictions on wrestling in New Jersey, so he's there with mm. the governor of New Jersey in his full costume and character, and she's. Uh, rewriting this bill to uh, uh, ease up the restrictions on wrestling in New Jersey, and they're calling it the death of this bill. So they have the Undertaker uh. out there. So that was a cool little publicity thing yeah. uh, for, to put the Undertaker out there for. They have the clip of that on Raw. And then, you know, the night before WrestleMania 13, we had the Slammy Awards in so 1997. And just had to mention that Undertaker walked away with three Slammies that night. Uh, he won Best Tattoo, beating out Crush. Shawn Michaels, Tommy Lee, and Drew Barrymore, and then <laughs> for that award, oh, which tattoo? Uh, the, all of the them. teardrop, or the fake teardrop. <laughs> oh, just all. Uh, he won best entrance music, beating out Sunny, Flash Funk, Farouk, um, and Double J, Jesse James. <laughs> oh man, I don't know though. Those are some good know. theme musics. I don't know. We won't. That's not our gimmick. We're not gonna sing it. No. Uh, <laughs> and he won. This was. This is a big one. He won the Star of the Highest Magnitude Slammy, beating out Shawn Michaels, Psycho Sid, Bret Hart, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. So wow, it sh- kind of shows you Damn. where he was in the company right there. Look at that. That's awesome. Good Pretty for him. Cool. Yeah. I knew their Slammys were the night before. I didn't go back and look at what. I, but they mentioned on Mania that he won several. So. Um, was he there? At the, he was there. He it? accepted all the awards in person. He was looking good in his you know, leather daddy outfit. But, um, <laughs> you know, speaking of looking good, just want to say once again that you're looking good in your Take Her Easy t-shirt right now. I'm looking good in my Take Her Easy t-shirt <laughs> right now. The only, one, only people missing are you out there, listeners. If you're not wearing your Take Her Easy t-shirt, it's going to look good. For WrestleMania, it's gonna look good after WrestleMania. You're gonna, it's gonna be this big collector's item after the Undertaker's quote-unquote retirement match this Sunday. So you can get those at tpublic.com. You can check out the links on all our social media pages. I mean, ha- doesn't that shirt feel good on you, Travis? Oh, it feels great. It's awesome. I love it. I've been uh, getting lots of comments about it today. My mother-in-law commented about it. She liked it. So. <laughs> it's a shirt even a mother-in-law can love. Boom. How about Boom. that? There you go. Tremendous. Um, awesome. <clears throat> that brings us to WrestleMania the 13th on March 23rd, 1997 in Stone Cold Steve Austin's favorite building, the Rosemont Horizon. Um, man, it is – I just want to say it's amazing how small this looks compared yeah. to how this, you know? It Crazy. Is small. I think there was like 13,000, 14,000 people there or something. That's just – man, it's nuts to see how um, – how just how big the brand has grown. You know, WrestleMania is this sells itself nowadays. They could put a bunch of mini matches on it and people fight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. That's but, what it's uh, gonna look like from my seats at WrestleMania. Yeah. It's gonna look like mini <laughs> mini John Cena and mini Undertaker. That's fine. Take yeah. your binoculars. I might have to. to. Um but I do want to mention that um as of the record or as when this podcast drops on Friday the sixth, um that evening will be the Hall of Fame, and the first one of the first people to walk out in this WrestleMania is Hillbilly Jim. <laughs> oh, how about that? <laughs> yep, Hall of Famer. So, anyway, again, congratulations to him. We haven't talked much about him. We uh, called we it, though. We called Rumble. We, you, yeah, predicted it right there. That was recorded before it was announced. So, anyway, uh, I do want to say one more thing, man. On this episode of, I mean, not episode, on this show, you've got Goldust Wrestling, Triple H Wrestling, and Undertaker Wrestling. All three of those guys will wrestle two nights from now. That's right. Guys, uh, that's just 21 years later. All three of those guys will be on the show. That's just cool, man. That's insane. Yeah. And cool. kudos to those guys. Yeah. Big time. And Goldust looks better now than he did back then. Yeah. Triple H physically does. He doesn't wrestle as good as he did, but his 
body looks better, and Undertaker, I guess we'll we'll see. And they'll As a, they'll be wrestling against some of the people on this card, WrestleMania 13's kids, like yeah. Rikishi's kids. Rikishi the Sultan is on WrestleMania 13, and his kids yeah. are going to wrestle at WrestleMania 34. Yeah. And that's Goldust weird. is still there. And yep. uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah. So this is neat. Uh, um, really, the only thing you need to watch on this show, of course, Brett versus Austin. Of yeah. course, uh, that never gets old. I'd say watch that Chicago street fight with Ahmed Johnson and LOD versus Nation yeah. Domination. I think it's yeah. fun. Uh, his right butt cheek victorious again. It's hanging out in <laughs> all his glory at the end. Just like... <laughs> oh. That's a fun brawl. Um, after that, we see an interview with Sid. Um, I don't know if he said anything funny. In that one. I just wrote it down <laughs> that he had an interview. And Undertaker comes out first with a great entrance, but he's back in his original gear. What is up yeah. with that, man? So he's got the same outfit that he wore at his first WrestleMania, they said on commentary. It's the same one. He's got the gray gloves, the tie. The wide brim hat like that. Um, the we cut haven't off seen sleeves. any of this since um, Survivor Definitely Series. Definitely Survivor Series yeah. is when he changed to the pirate, the angry pirate guy. Um, so yeah, we haven't seen any of this stuff. Again, he's he's kind of gone a little bit away from the complete leather pirate gimmick to you know what he's been wrestling in the last few months. But um, it's neat, and is I mean it's neat in that Jr. points it out. And this is this is what he wore his first WrestleMania uh, and all, but. Um, and even in this match, the way this match is wrestled, um, it's almost like the last year's worth of progression of his character is just taking a pause. You know, um, he wrestles a different style. It's, this this match feels like one from 1992, 1993. Yeah. To me, it does. Uh, probably to you too, yeah. Because it's, it's two big guys. Um, and this, as we get into it, break it down a little bit. It's, but it's, it's very old school. Feels like that, and again, he's wearing this old school outfit. So I don't know. I don't know what the gimmick was, but it's. I mean, it's cool. But it is cool, and I guess it's just a nod to history. Uh, yeah. And it's it's special because, as Jr. points out, this is his first ever WrestleMania main event. Yep. And uh, again, he points out he's never lost at WrestleMania, so the streak is continuing to subtly be built up. But yeah, he he. He goes back to the leather outfit or or the pirate outfit uh, the next night on Raw. You know, yeah. this is just for this night. Uh, so it is cool to see that, um, to see him bring it out for a special occasion. Um, but it's weird because you're going to see him at the end win the title and have it. And you'd think that a picture of him from 97 would have come from, you know, 1991. You know, yeah. it's kind of strange to see yeah. that. Um, but uh, I want to say before this match starts, too, before he comes out, uh, HBK comes out to commentate again. Yeah. Oh, man. Vincent Mann's got his chapstick on. He's loving it. <laughs> but, man, dude, did you see how many two sweets HBK was giving out? Mm -hmm. He's too sweet in behind his jacket. He's too sweet in the fans. It's just neat because, again, he's best friends with the NWO guys. So, um, But, yeah, I don't know. And that gives us a another unique commentary team, uh, one one and only Jr. Vince, the King, and HPK is our commentary team. Yeah, for this one, and you so know what? Pretty unique. Four guys is a lot, but I liked it. It worked. I, everyone played their role and they played it well. Sean had some good stuff. I want to mention that as we get into the match. Sean had some good stuff to add to this. I I, I liked it. I've always um, thought HPK was great on commentary. He yeah. used to do some old episodes of Raw uh, back yeah. when he was a heel. Um, I've always thought he was a good commentator. Yeah, so um, we got our two guys, a Sid and Undertaker, in the ring. <clears throat> Wait, how Bell... we have two guys, two guys in this main event. Yes, Under Undertaker and Sid are the wrestlers in this main event. Supposed to be. Yeah, supposed to be. Yeah, go right. Ahead. But Bret Hart comes out, and uh, <laughs> it's just weird. Like this is the WrestleMania main event. Exactly. And, and Bret Hart just walks out and gets on the mic, and he starts berating Shawn Michaels and berating Taker and berating Sid. To some massive heat. And keep in mind, this is after the double turn. He's, I guess you could call him a full-fledged heel at this point. Um, he's about to be. But, um, yeah, it's weird. It's almost like an episode, like a, a Raw angle. You don't do this at WrestleMania. You know? No. That's it's what... weird. <laughs> yeah. It... He's out and, yeah, nails these guys, you know, on, on the mic and stuff. And uh, Sid hits him with a power bomb and that sends Fred off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Bret Hart does, yeah, yeah, he's going full fledged heel here. He tells uh, 
Undertaker that when he slammed the cage door that he slammed the door on their friendship. Yeah. Uh, he tells Sid that he's a fraud, and yeah, Sid just power bombs him, <laughs> uh, punches him, and this is where I wanted to ask you: Have you ever in your life seen anyone punch someone the way that Sid punches somebody? <laughs> like Sid punches. And uh, this is an audio podcast, but I'm trying to describe. Sid punches with the side of his fist. He, yes, he, he does. rears his arm back to the side and just like punches with the like the the knuckle side, or well, not even well, it's, the top it's, side. It's you like know? if you slap someone, open hand slap someone, but you at the last second you close yes, your fist. Exactly. It's a slap with your fist closed. It's not a punch. It's a slap. No one in their <laughs> right mind punches someone like that in a real fight. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I, I didn't notice that, but now that you mentioned it, that's uh, how he I, always punches. Comes out, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely does. So yeah, he slaps him with his knuckles closed <laughs> or his fist closed. That's funny. Um, no, and uh, yeah. then he Sid starts to cut his own promo on Brett, and this is where Undertaker <laughs> starts the match and and attacks uh, Sid. Yeah, and gets the match started. <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, and Taker gets in control right from the beginning. He hits old school and. He's hitting the stinger splashes a couple, but again, it is kind of a more slow. It sounds like we're, it's fast, but it's not. It's a slow speed. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Sid blocks a stinger splash, and he's going to go into a uh, bear hug mode here. Speaking of slow, man, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he got he brings... five minutes of bear hug here in this yeah. match, just on and on and on. And you know, like a Undertaker, we always say this. He does his best. He tries to. Sp- work while he's in a rest hold or, yep. or a move like that tries to sell tries to do stuff but it goes on for a long time yep it does but stegger sells like a million bucks man he's one of the best sellers of all time for a big guy he's so good at selling man i love it but um sid does a bunch of hair pulls and elbows to the back again sid's picked the body part he just shows to pick the back the, the mid back or the lower back of undertaker so i mean you don't you don't uh, usually see that in a big man's match you know you, right. you're used to seeing these guys just throw each other around or just you know like godzilla and king kong in there but he's like working a scientific wrestling match in the main event of wrestlemania in chicago a hotbed of, of uh you know, fans smart fans so it's kind of strange um to see that and then he clotheslines undertaker over the top and uh wait oh, does wait. undertaker land on his feet Absolutely, he of does. Course he does. He always does. Um, if he doesn't, it's an accident. So yeah, he lands on his feet, pulls Sid out, and Sid kicks him, and he uh, Undertaker backflips over the uh, French announce table here. So uh, yeah, and at this point, Vince on commentary says, "Oh yeah, by the way, uh, Gr- President Grill and Masoon made this match no holds barred. <laughs> like, yeah, no announcement to the crowd. No, well, yeah, yeah. It's just made events no yeah. holds barred now." And it really doesn't come into play after this that no. much, you know. I, I, he was like, "Oh yeah, by the way, it's no hold, it's no hold bar, no DQ." And then later on, we're going to see the refs calling for five count in the corner. Yeah, uh, he's doing count outs in the ring. It's again, we've mentioned this a long time ago with the uh, I think the rest in peace match or something. Mm-hmm. There's just not a lot of communication. Um, the fans don't even know. It, and now to the fans, this is a no DQ. They can cheer at least, you know. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. But um, it just. It just seems like a weird thing to announce during the main event of your biggest show of the year. Yeah. Uh, so Didn't make a lot of sense. Um, another thing that didn't make sense was <laughs> Sid wears him down and, and uh, gets him in the, Sid gets Undertaker in the ring and gets a camel clutch on him. And I'm thinking, yeah. that, that's the Sultan's move, dude. You yep. stole another dude's move in the main event, Sid. What are you doing, yep. bro? Yep. Uh, but Sid does do one of my favorite things ever. Uh, oh, when yes. he uh, gets a I power slam on Undertaker <laughs> and he goes for a pinfall, gets a two count, and just keeps on covering him, keeps putting the shoulders <laughs> back down and going for the cover, dude. That is one of my that's... favorite wrestling moves that no one does anymore. Ric Flair used to do it all the time. Oh, that's exactly what I was say. He does the Ric Flair multiple pin spot because he does it once. He gets a two count. He goes to pin him again, and and Lawler on commentary goes, "Oh, well now now he'll get him." And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's odd." Like Jerry Lawler put it over, like, "Oh, he just needed a second three count." Like, it's Wearing awesome. him down, yeah, it's great. But he does it multiple times during the match. This is not the only time he does it. Yeah. A few other times later, but this time he does it. He lets when Andre kicks out the second time, he lets out a huge audible GD, and Karen picks up. I was like, "Whoops!" So um. But during all this, I want to put over Shawn Michaels' commentary. He's really good. He's putting over 
both guys. He's putting over. He's been in the ring with both of them. He's saying, you know, he's not playing favorites here because again, these guys are both technically faces. Um, but he's putting them over, which is really good to see. Um, it helps to have a, a former or a wrestler on commentary to yeah. help sell that, you know, um, which I like. But yeah, like you said, I love the multiple pin spot. When you get two count, do it again. Two count, <laughs> do it again. It's awesome. Ric Flair, I used to pop every time Flair did it, so um, it's good. Um, yeah, this, yeah, the, what am I trying, what, what should I say? Um, Not there's much. just a lot more, yeah, a lot more back and forth here. Um, I, th- I feel like this match is probably 10 minutes longer than it should have been. Both guys just oh, yeah. start to kind of, you can tell they're getting kind of tired, getting kind of yeah. gassed out there. Um, they do a cool little spot where they do a double big boot to each mm-hmm. other. They both run into a big boot and knocks both guys out. And, you know, it's just, it's not a bad match, but no. it just does not live up. You can't live up to Bret Hart Austin, and Steve Austin. Right. Yeah, it's just tough, man. They're in a tough spot. Yeah. They're doing what they can, but it just doesn't match up. It's like when Jericho and Triple H went on after Rock and Hogan, you know? Mm. Like, it just, that was a good match, but, well, it's better than this one, but you still, you couldn't live up to that, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, Perfect it's not going to happen. So, uh, Sid hits some middle, like he jumps up the middle rope and some axe handles. Oh man. I, I cringed every time. Cause we all, as those of you who are wrestling fans know in 2001, he did that from WCW and his leg broke in half. So, well, watch him do this. Uh, yeah. sh- on commentary, Shawn Michael says that eventually going up to the ropes is going to do Sid in. <laughs> oh, we're up there. Little bit. A little bit. Prophesying. <laughs> I was science, so true um, words were never spoken. That's right, man. <laughs> uh, again, it's just some back and forth, some slow stuff. There's there's nerve holds in this match. The the double big bill, like you said. There's um, uh, Undertaker throws Sid off the middle rope and then hits a top rope diving clothesline for a two count. Yep. But then as he gets up from that, he hits the throat slash. You know, saying I'm going to go for the tombstone. And that gets a really good pop from the Chicago crowd. Yeah, it starts he kind picks- of pick up here. Yeah, starts business picks up here. He picks him picks up Sid with a tombstone and Sid reverses it into a tombstone of his own. Hits Undertaker with a tombstone, two count, and this crowd comes unglued at this point, in my opinion. I mean, for this match, they come unglued. They're they because I mean no one kicks out to watch Undertaker kick out of his own move was pretty cool to see. So. Well to have someone do Undertaker's own move, we've yeah. only seen that a couple times and, and Sid did the Undertaker cover too. Yeah. He like uh, I remember, you know, everyone I think a lot of people remember Triple H and Undertaker where Triple H did that at, at WrestleMania 27 when we were there. And that's one of the best near falls yeah. I've ever seen right there. Uh, but this this was good too. There's um, about 40 people chanting rest in peace at yep. this point. So good for them. So And then the, uh, the third man in this match comes out again. <laughs> Brett the Hitman Hart. I uh, can't keep him in the back. He hits some chair shots. To Sid, um, helps uh, again interfering and trying to help out the Undertaker, I guess. Uh, yeah. Try to get revenge on Sid. I don't know, but um, at this point, Vince Man says, "What a loser Bret Hart turned out to be." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just with such disdain in his yeah. voice. Yeah. Well, probably because he's sitting next to his homeboy Shawn Michaels. So. Yeah. True. Is, yeah. True. But yeah, you know, Sean is shooting on Brett during this, so that's the only thing he is like he's saying stuff and you know, like he doesn't like me and all this stuff. So um but yeah, you get those those chair shots and then uh Undertaker slams Sid's uh back or into the ring post, you know. Um takes him inside and hits a choke slam and Sid gets his shoulder up and he goes oh, for a power good, That was close too. It was like yeah. two and nine tenths, man. Oh yeah, yeah it was good a good, kick out. It was a good two count. Yeah, those are the good, the really good close ones. They have you, you know, waiting on the edge of your seat. So, um, Sid goes for power bomb as as Brett. Brett's like he's like Stone Cold was at, at mm-hmm. you know, earlier. He's he's a little cockroach that won't give up. And he comes back on the apron and hits an apron stunner. One of Taker's moves. Hits the apron stunner on Sid and Sid turns around into the into Undertaker and hits a tombstone and the crowd goes nuts because they know he's about to win the title. Man, they're it's cool to see them start cheering and get pumped before the actual three count because they know they're about to witness something cool. So he gets the three count and um, with the classic pin and, and, and 21 minutes into this match and, and he wins the WWF title for the first time in six, five and a half years. Yeah. Right.
second time overall, first time in uh, five and a half years, like you said. Undertaker wins again. He is now six and zero oh in his WrestleMania streak. Standing ovation, by the way. Absolutely, I, I will say that the crowd the crowd gives him the respect he deserves and and earned. I say earned at the and end of this match. The announcers are putting him over huge. HBK especially, he's yeah. putting over Undertaker huge, saying he deserves it, and uh, you know you can't argue with him as the champion. But I do find it interesting that The Undertaker wins at WrestleMania. He's the big baby face going over. He's the guy that's supposed to carry the company and the title throughout their year. And it's interesting that he, the baby face, needed a heel's help twice in this match yep. to win the main event at WrestleMania. Kind of odd booking for that. It is. Well, they, I guess they want to keep Sid strong. I don't know, man. But, yeah, because Sid, yeah, Sid gets a heels. Yeah, he'll be, he'll beats him up and then Taker wins. Yeah, it is strange. Like I said, there's no clear cut. This is the face. This is the heel guy. So, I mean, I mean, it's two baby faces technically going at it. So, I don't know. It is strange. It doesn't feel like a WrestleMania caliber main event that we're used to nowadays. Um, this definitely wouldn't fly. The crowd would be chanting all kinds of crazy oh, stuff. Yeah. But, um, but. Again, and it felt like an old school match, an old Undertaker match. Again, not to mention he's wearing his old outfit, so uh, it's it's strange, you know. But check out WrestleMania 13 um, for these shenanigans, and definitely again, Brett and Austin is so good. They were just on Edge and Christian's podcast breaking the match down together, which was really neat to hear too, because they threw some stuff out that I didn't even notice. I had to go back and watch it again. So really cool stuff. For historical purposes, it's definitely worth watching. Uh, you can fast forward to the uh, Bret Hart Stone Cold match and just watch from there. Watch the street fight yep. and then watch this main event. Uh, that's all you need to see here. You don't need to see The Rock and The Sultan. Uh, but uh, <laughs> again, our boy, our boy Undertaker is here with his second WWF title reign. He's going to begin here and carry it through the summer into some more iconic uh, and some not so iconic matches. We're going to hear cover on here. And again, this year, 1997, is a great year. Uh, in the World Wrestling Federation and in WCW as well. And ECW, they're about to get their first pay-per-view. It's a great time to be a fan in wrestling. It is. And and speaking of fans, Travis, oh. we finally have something we've been asking for <laughs> for 34 episodes. We have found one of our listeners who was at this particular WrestleMania event. He shouted us out on Twitter, at Talking Taker, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so tell us all about it. He did. You know, at the end of every episode, I always say, if you were there, please let us know. And I want, we want to shout out. This was on March 13th, I believe. He, he tweeted us at Talk and Taker. And I hope I don't butcher your name. It's um, Don Hyman or Heman or Heyman. I can't. I can't it's H-E-I-M-A-N-N. I like that you have two N's on your name. It's excellent. It gives it an extra mm sound. So anyway, Don, uh, he said, he replied to us and he said, crazy. I remember Brett at the start of the match. And then when Brett clothesline sit on the top rope, and he walked into the tombstone. I went nuts. I also lived near St. Louis, and the first hell in the cell, I was four rows from the cell. Unbelievable. So thank you, Don. Man, to be there, again, I, w I just talked about how the fans went nuts when he hit that tombstone, and they were already, you know, they're getting crazy because they know he's about to win the title. And uh, Don, our boy here, was there cheering him on, and I can't wait till we get the hell in the cell in a few months, and we'll, we'll shout Don out, or we'll reach out to him and see if he has any comments about that, too. So thank you, Don, for taking us up on our offer. I've thrown it out there for 33 episodes, or maybe 32. I don't know if I did it on the uh, Buried Alive episode. But anyway, we appreciate you reaching out to us. Anybody else, please reach out. If you were there at this match, uh, please let us know. Please let us know. Yeah, we'll, we'll shout you out, too. We can hear from more people. It doesn't have to just be one. Uh, nope. So we appreciate that. And if you're there at any of the other ones coming up, we'd love to hear from you, too. You know where to reach us at Talking Taker, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All the various podcasting services out there. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Podbean, YouTube. Hit us up in the comments. Subscribe, of course. That's the best thing you can do so you never miss a minute of The Undertaker action. And uh, give us a rating, a thumbs up, five stars if you enjoy it. Share it with your friends. Uh, that's the biggest thing that can help us out. Uh, and, you know, any one of you that listens and downloads one episode or those of you that have gone through the archives, man, that is so cool to us. Yeah. It's so fun. For, we're just doing this for fun. 
you know, we had a we had a sponsor for one episode a couple weeks ago. I don't know if we'll get any more. <laughs> uh, you know, we didn't we didn't make much money off of it. But uh, you know, uh, you know, we'd love to make money off of doing this, but really, we're just doing it for fun. And uh, wrestling's supposed to be fun. Uh, and connecting you with other people out there. That's how me and Travis have connected, and we love connecting with you guys, uh, even if it's just one or two of you. 30 of you, 50 of you, whatever. We love connecting. So we appreciate this. We're going to keep it rolling. And we'd love any kind of support that you can give us along the way. It means the world to us. And let us know your WrestleMania 34 uh, reactions too. Because at the time this drops, Undertaker will wrestle John Cena, we assume. And uh, next week we'll cover, I guess, what happened. And Alex will give us his his lowdown of what happened at WrestleMania. And uh, What's your yeah. prediction, man? For that match? Yeah. Oh, Taker, easy, man. Taker's got to go over, man. He's got to beat Cena. That's what Cena does. Cena's like the new Chris Jericho. He comes back and loses to all the young boys. But uh, in this instance, he's going to lose. Dude, Undertaker's not going to lose three matches at WrestleMania. I don't see a reason for him coming back if it's just to lose again. Yeah, I, it's. It, I feel like it's got to be to go out, which seems weird. You'd think Undertaker would be the kind of guy that would want to go out on his back and not criticizing him for that. Uh, but yeah, I feel like there's no reason for him to come back unless it's just to, to go out on a victory. Yeah. Well, that's we'll the see. old adage. That's what Stone Cold says. He always put, you always go put my over on your way out, but you know, Vince loves Taker, man. I bet he's, he probably wants this. If this is his last match, which we've said that for the last 10 years, um, <laughs> if it is his last one, Vince probably wants him to go because he loves him so much. He just, he's owed, he's never gone away from Vincent man, you know? So he's a loyal employee. So who knows? Anyway. And if he's losing, I, I say just. Just like Jerry Lawler last week, throw him in the casket and light it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Send him out. There you go. In a blaze of glory. That's right. So, anyway. But, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week with uh, Abib. Takers gets another pay per view. Revenge of the Taker, right? His own in your house. So, in your house, some number when uh, Revenge of the Taker. But, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, take her easy. The most phenomenal athlete to ever step into the square circle. The World Wrestling Federation is finally World Wrestling Federation champion. And all the creatures of the night that have stood behind this man week after week, month after month, indeed, year after year, have now been gratified. And there have been a lot of men who have held that belt undeservingly. But I can say with all truth, that man deserves to be exactly where he's at. How fitting that it happened at WrestleMania 13! Yeah!